Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms, and today we're going to be doing something I absolutely hate to do. That is uh, putting inner tubes in these old tractor tires. This thing has been driving me crazy all year, which if you've paid close attention to my videos, you'll notice this tractor's been sitting around most of the year, right in this very spot. Uh, the front tire's completely dry rotted out after, I think it's been uh, four or five years now I've owned this one. The rear's slowly leaked down, the front's really been driving me crazy. Then one day, even with bead seal in it, this one came completely off the rim because I was running it low. I hit a bump or something and that was it. So I managed to limp it over here and there it sat for the rest of the season. Now, I bought a kit off of eBay that was four inner tubes, two for the back, two for the front. I'm going to go ahead and do the unpleasant task of pulling each of these wheels off, breaking the beads on the ones that don't already have broken beads getting inner tubes in there and putting them back on. And I'm not going to show you how to do all four of them, but what I will do is show you how to do one of the fronts, which I'll show you how easy it is to do if it's already off the bead. And then I will show you how to do one of the rears, which those are still on the bead, so I'll show you how to break them off of the bead and get an inner tube in there and then fill them back up. This is a frustrating job. Yeah, if you did them all the time every day, you'd learn some secrets to it. But uh, the secret is patience. That's the secret. So in order to get them off the rim, that's easy enough. Or I'm sorry, off the axle here. You're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers and a screwdriver. And there's rubber boots on here that you're going to be pulling off. I tend to grab onto them with a pair of needle nose, and they'll usually come off with a little bit of prying. Try not to break the boot itself because uh, it holds the grease. So I'll set that aside. Once you have that off, there's a C-clip here. And you're going to want to just find the uh, tab for it. Let's see here. There it is. Pull up. Oh, and there it goes. Try not to lose that. That's what it looks like there. Oh, boy, it's covered in grease. If you do lose the seat clip, you can always order another one. They come in two packs. They're available online. But you're out a day or two while you're waiting. Then there should be a washer, or sometimes two. This one has two. You just set those aside as well. That is all there is to it. Go ahead and remove your wheel. Like I said, this one badly dry rotted. Uh, it had bead sealer in it at some point, but it, it's beyond that at this point. So we're going to take it inside. I'll show you with a couple of screwdrivers and some patience how to put a new inner tube in there. Let's go. Okay, as you can see here, this is what uh, my forty. I think it was forty-five dollars with free shipping. Four tire tubes. These two are for the rears. I set those aside. These two are for the front. I'm going to take one of those out of the package and the other one will set to the side. And here we are with very, very tired looking tire. You can see the cracking around the edge here. Now, ideally, it'd be time to replace this tire, but it still has plenty of tread left. It's just worn. It's old. It's uh, weathered. So in order to save this, we're going to have to peel the tire off of the rim, at least on one side, and that'll allow us to sneak that inner tube in there. Now it has a, a valve stem on from the uh, original, because originally it didn't have a tube. What we're gonna do first is we'll get a pair of pliers in here and cut this off. Here we go again. I've got another tire. It's stuck on the rim. This one has the bead still intact. <clears throat> so in order to break that loose, you're going to need your screwdriver and you're going to need a hammer and you're going to need some patience. And you're just slowly going to work your way around the tire. Wow. My God. That was really easy on that side. Let's see if we get the same kind of look over on this side. It's starting to go. There it goes. And now it's broken. We're going to have to do the same thing we did to the other side. 
cutting this off and then removing this upward. And that's just a matter of just cutting that rubber away. Like so. And then you grab it uh, with the front here. Just pull up. And that's it. You can discard that. We won't be needing that anymore. The next step is where things start to get interesting. I'm going to collect a few screwdrivers. So there are tools, specialty tools that you can do this job with, but I'm going to show you today for the sake of saving some money that a couple screwdrivers can get the job done. Now, in order to get that rim free, we're going to be doing this. I've got one screwdriver in the hole. I'm going to get another screwdriver and work it around this hole. And little by little, we're going to bring this up off of the rim. And as you go, you just work little by little. Little by little, working around. So you get to a certain point, usually it's, it's around the halfway point. That it'll come completely up. Now it's hard to see without a flashlight. Let me see if I can grab one. Even with it, it might not be so easy to see. But you want to determine what it is that caused this to go bad. In this case, I'm very positive that what killed it was the, uh, the dry rod. But if you have a nail or something in there, well, it's not going to do you much good to put an inner tube in and then go ahead and blow it up. And there's a, gosh, is that a black widow? Well, let's hope not. Now you're just going to do a search. You can look on the outside too. But you want to see if you've got a nail still sticking in there, you're going to take this $10 inner tube and, and, and ruin it. So you don't want that. Okay, so we've got it loose on the, on the rim. The next thing we're going to do is stuff this thing down in there. Now you've got your uh, fill valve. You're going to want to have that somewhat lined up to where the hole is because when you start putting air into it, you want it to be close by. And this is just a matter of tucking this in. It's not the easiest thing to do by any means. It's a little dance you're going to do. You're going to stuff it in one side and then the other side will pop up. But you got to get it around the lip of the rim the entire way around. On a new tire, this is not that difficult a job. The rubber is still flexible, but this tire is dry. It doesn't have much flex to it. Uh, it's being stubborn. Okay. So now it's all the way in there. Hopefully you can see that. But you've got to get that fill valve lined up with the hole and insert it through the hole. And that too can be a bit of a trick. It's all done by feel. Looks like this one's rotated. Get my... Let's see if I can see from the back side here. looks like it's a pain in the ass. It's because it is. Okay, I found the fill valve. It has rotated quite a bit, but we can rotate that back. And then it's a matter of... You gotta do this by hand. You don't want to jam a screwdriver in here. You'll end up popping this or, or ruining it. And although these inner tubes are somewhat durable, they're not that durable. It doesn't take much to poke a fresh hole. Once you got a hole, you're back to the same problem. You could spend all that time putting it back together again and end up with nothing. If you can't see this, that's okay, because I can't either. This is just what you got to do. 
You're doing this all by touch until you can get that little fill valve to come through the hole. There you go. Okay, see? Wow, that was fun. And only three more to go after this one. The next step is going to be a little simpler. So this is it. I'm going to try to reach over the camera and do this, but it's hard enough to do it without the cameras rolling. But you are looking at basically smashing down on this. I'm going to apply as much pressure as I can, and then I'm going to start working around. It can be a bit tricky, there's no doubt about that. Once you've got it to about the halfway point, you're in the home stretch whether or not it seems like it or not. Oh, man. See what I'm doing here? If the camera's not in the way, my arm's not in the way, I'm not even sure what's in the way. I don't have my assistant here today, probably because they don't want to be anywhere near me when I'm doing work like this. And that's it. <laughs> and as the fill valve falls right back through the hole at the last possible second. Generally speaking, a pair of needle nose will do the job too. As a matter of fact, let me grab those. And we can feed that back in there, although not ideal to do it that way. Again, if you have a second set of hands, and that could be super helpful at this moment in time. Someone to grab it from the other side. In this case, I do not have that person around. And there we go. Okay. And then inflate. Here we go. Now you can see because this uh, fell back through at an inopportune time, that valve is not sticking straight out of the hole. But that's okay. It's fine just the way it is. As long as it doesn't have too sharp an angle where it could cut the uh, ridge here, you'll be fine. I'm Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms, and I'll see you next time. Take care.